Hey golfers, it's Dave from Fit2U Golf. Welcome back to another episode of Fitting in a Minute, where I try to take some ridiculously complex part of club fitting or club making and summarize it into a one minute video. Today's topic is going to be tip diameter. This idea was sent in by a subscriber and I thought it was a great idea and a good topic for fitting in a minute. Now before we get started, let me just tell you that when I talk about tip diameters, I drop the decimal point. It's kind of a secret code that club makers and club fitters have. So for example, if I say 370 instead of 0 0.370, I know that that means that that tip is not 370 inches in diameter. I mean, that would, that would be unplayable. It wouldn't even fit in your bag. Okay, so let's get started. And I'm going to start with a 350 tip diameter. The 350 tip diameter is the old standard for drivers and fairy woods. Shaft manufacturers like this because it afforded them extra space for a, a stiffer tip and to reduce breakage. But as materials have gotten lighter and stronger, now we're at the 335 tip diameter for most fairy woods drivers and also aftermarket shafts. Next we have the 370 tip diameter. This is for hybrids and irons. Like the 350 and the 335, this is parallel tip, meaning that an extended section at the bottom of the club is kept parallel so that you can do tip trimming to accommodate the heavier weights of irons as they progress through the set, but also so you can do incremental trimming to frequency match a set. Finally, we have the 355 taper. As the name says, this is tapered at the bottom. The last half inch or so is tapered down to 335, and then it extends back up to that 370 close to the hosel. If you use one of these shafts, you need to make sure that you have a iron head that accommodates a uh, taper tip, so it's either made for it or has a universal hosel. And you may want to consider using a collared ferrule as this adds some extra strength above the hosel. Now a couple of caveats here. In terms of the 350 versus 335 in a driver or fairway wood, I've never broken a 350 tip. I have broken two 335s. One of them was early in my kind of hobbyist club making days and I got a little epoxy happy and created a shear point right at the hosel. The other was a couple of years ago when I put an ultralight shaft in a clamp uh, to uh, finish the ferrule and I thought to myself this is a bad idea. I'm pretty sure I heard a slight crack and shortly thereafter it failed. Here's a tip. Don't put anything less than 65 grams in a clamp. Now in terms of the 335 taper tip, I really like working with these shafts. They allow the manufacturer to make a shaft specific for each iron, so it comes without the ability to tip trim, really, uh, only to butt trim for length. But that means the shaft manufacturer can create a, a weight and flex profile across all the irons. It's very consistent. As a club fitter, this makes my job a lot easier. The, the flex and weight profile is already set. So if I'm working with a golfer who chooses or, or is using a hosel that will accept a taper tip, I'll probably work with that rather than a parallel tip, unless of course that kind of shaft doesn't fit their swing. I haven't noticed much difference in terms of performance in terms of taper tip or parallel, but from a club fitting standpoint and a club making standpoint, it, uh, it's a time saver and uh, adds, uh, I think, to the quality control. So there you go. Uh, I know I cheated there at the end by adding some caveats, but more or less that's fitting in a minute. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have questions about uh, tip diameters. Obviously, I left out more information than I included. Let me know if you have other ideas for uh, fitting in a minute episodes. Uh, subscribe if you haven't, and stay positive.